From impregnating a 13-year-old child to losing his father to suicide. I wish my dad would have been there for my first basketball game. Carl Malone's family is a little out of the norm, and there are a lot more to secrets about his family to uncover. So let's dive in. This is the family of Carl Malone. The youngest boy out of nine children, Carl Malone was born on July 24, 1967 in the small town of Summerfield, Louisiana, to Shedrick Hay and Shirley Malone. When Carl was about three years old, Shedrick abandoned them to start a different family with another woman, leaving Shirley to take care of her children alone. But it became even worse because when he was six years old, his father, who was a heavy alcoholic, committed suicide. Carl wouldn't reveal this detail about himself until he was already a star in the NBA in 1994. Shirley, on the other hand, never remarried. Shirley raised her children alone while having three different jobs, including being a homemaker and working at a sawmill while refusing to get on welfare of any kind. But even with her numerous jobs, she still found time to take her kids to church, go fishing and hunting with them, and provided them with basic necessities. You see, back then in Summerfield, it was almost impossible to walk by a house and not find a basketball hoop of some sort, even if it was just an old utility pole and a piece of wood. But for the Malones, this was not a luxury that they could afford, so guess what his mother did when Carl was in fifth grade and they couldn't afford a hoop? She would hold her hands out to form a rim for Carl to shoot through. She was doing this to prevent him from choosing football, which she thought was unsafe. But getting the basketball in the first place was a serious financial headache. It cost over $2, but as she said in a documentary, that was like $200 to her at the time. So she decided to pay for the ball with installments. Basketball was two dollars and like forty nine cents, but that was like two hundred dollars to me, you know. Despite her busy schedule and the limited resources available to her, she always made sure that her children had the support and guidance they needed to succeed in life. The work ethic that Carl showed on the basketball court started with his mother. Carl once said of his mother, quote, my mom is the only person in my life that every dream I had as a young boy, not my siblings, not my friends, not my teachers, anything that all the people would laugh and think outlandish, she would always say, I think you will, end quote. Shirley supported her son's decision to join Utah, and she was referred to as Miss Shirley in the Utah Jazz organization. She was a devoted mother, yes, but also a devoted fan and family of the franchise. Nevertheless, it is said that she always had her heart with the Los Angeles Lakers, even after Carl spent over 18 years in Utah. She was therefore elated when Carl finally joined the Los Angeles Lakers in 2004, but this joy was short-lived. A few weeks after signing with the Lakers, Carl was away in New York training with the US team for an Olympic qualifying tournament when he got a call that his mother had suffered a heart attack. The very woman who Carl had been closest to the most, who was his anchor on this earth, his best friend, had died at the age of 64 on August 13th, 2003. After her death, the Utah Jazz released a statement with part of it reading, quote, Through her son, Shirley was a popular and loved member of the Jazz family. We extend our love and prayers to Carl and to the Malone family at this time. Saying Malone was distraught as a result of his mother's passing would be an understatement. But his mother had brought her children up in the way of the Lord as Baptist, and he said he would be looking up to God for comfort and strength just like his mom had. She was survived by nine children, five boys, and four girls. Carl Malone is the last child of Shirley Malone. Growing up in such a big family, Carl learned to be resourceful and independent. He learned to share, compromise, and take on responsibilities from a very young age. But by far the most important things Carl had picked from living with his brothers who were older and taller than him were physicality and hard work. You see, Carl had been a skinny kid growing up, but going hunting and farming with them toughened him right up. And probably to prevent Carl from knocking out their mother's teeth, his brothers later nailed a bicycle rim to a tree for them to shoot hoops. They would also play in the mud, a roughhouse style that has become characteristic of Carl's game that made players call him a bully in the NBA. Sometimes they played in the mud for hours and after that would go on to ride hogs. They loved to play and work, but they were also really sweet. 
Knowing how hardworking their mother was, Carl's sisters would usually leave notes on the stove for her that read, We love you, get some rest, or any other such loving message. That was how the family lived and loved until he moved to start other families in college and eventually in the NBA. One such important relationship was the one he developed with John Stockton. John Stockton and Carl Malone had one of the most iconic and successful player relationships in the history of the game. Together they played for the Utah Jazz for 18 seasons and led the team to the NBA Finals twice. John Stockton sends the Utah Jazz to the NBA Finals! Solidifying their place as legends in NBA history. Off the court, Stockton and Malone were known for their deep friendship. They both had the same humble beginnings and drives to succeed, which helped them bond. They were known for their close-knit relationship and mutual respect for each other's talents. They were often spotted working out together, golfing, and even hanging out with each other's families. In conclusion, John Stockton and Carl Malone's partnership on and off the court is a testament to the power of chemistry, mutual respect, and friendship the two shared. Stockton once said of Carl, quote, just one thing after another, just kind of bond, 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 to where now he is literally inseparable for me as a brother. We don't see each other every day, we talk occasionally on the phone, the term is probably overused, but there's nothing I wouldn't do for Carl Malone, and I think he feels the same way. End quote. Do you think there's any duo presently in the NBA that is better than Malone and Stockton? Tell us in the comments section. Anyway, after Carl found the perfect partnership on the court, he tried to do the same in the love scene, but it was far from perfect. In fact, it was rough, painful, and full of emotions. Benita Ford was Carl's first girlfriend in high school and became pregnant with twins at the age of 17. But when the kids Daryl and Cheryl were born, Benita told Carl, who was also 17 years at the time, that the kids weren't his. I just, you know, I thought maybe we could get through life without telling them, you know. Then, in an unexpected turn of events in 1989 that surprised Carl, he was told that the kids were now his own and child support would be needed. The matter was taken to court and the NBA star was pissed. Three years later in 1992, the court charged him with contempt for not revealing his assets and his DNA test. But it turned out that they were actually his kids and the case was later settled out of court. In 1998, Malone met the twins for the first time. The twins went on to play basketball at Louisiana Tech University where their father is an alma mater. We will get to know them better soon. But for now, Benita was not the only girl Carl had gotten pregnant out of wedlock. But this other relationship, frankly, should have gotten him in prison. When Malone was 20 years old and a sophomore at Louisiana Tech, he impregnated a 13-year-old girl named Gloria Bell, who gave birth to Demetrius Bell in 1984. But the parents of Gloria didn't want to press any charges at the time, as they were hoping for Carl to provide parental support for his child which he wouldn't be able to do locked up. However, Carl denied the child until a paternity test in 1996 was conducted and he was a 99.3% match to be the father of Demetrius. The case was settled out of court, but Carl never accepted the child. He was badly criticized, rightly so, for being a bad person for denying Demetrius and impregnating Gloria in the first place, but he never came out to really talk about it. When you considered how he had been neglected as a kid by his own father, it was expected that he wouldn't want to put another child through the same bitter experience. But this is even more strange because Carl was also known for saving the lives of numerous children through his Carl Malone Foundation for kids. So why was he not open to being a father for his own blood? Well, the truth is he eventually did try to mend things with Demetrius, but it didn't end up like he would have expected, but we will talk about that later on in the video. Now, Carl may never have married any of these women, but there was one woman that Carl went down with for the long haul, the former supermodel Kay Kinsey. Kay Kinsey is an entrepreneur and former supermodel. She was born on August 8, 1964 in Idaho Falls, Idaho, three years after her parents Bob and Celestina met in the Philippines in 1961. She had attended her neighborhood school in Idaho before moving to Boise State University to attain a degree in sociology. While she was in college, she went into modeling and she soon won the Miss Idaho USA pageant in 1988. It was during the spring of this year that she met Carl Malone while he was signing autographs in a local bookstore in Salt Lake City, Utah. 
She didn't know him before that time, and Carl was happy to meet someone that didn't recognize him as a popular NBA player. Two years later, the lovebirds were wedded on December 24, 1990. After their wedding, she quit modeling and became a pageants director for a while, and then she established a restaurant in Ruston called Teriyaki Grill. She's been a very successful businesswoman, launching several businesses such as Eskimo's Ice Cream and Wolfcrest Bread, amongst others. Despite the common trend amongst NBA players past and present, Carl and Kay had remained married for over three decades now. They have four children, Kylie, Katie, Carl Jr., and Carly. Details about Malone's children are quite limited, but we were able to gather all you need to know about most of them. The first daughter of Carl and Kay, Katie Malone, was born on November 8, 1991. She struggled with acne, which made her anxious around people, according to some reports. But she has long ago turned things around for herself after discovering CBD, which she has also made into a business now by selling CBD products. She also co-owns a cigar lounge with her father called the Legends 32 Lounge. As for Kylie Malone, she was born April 7th, 1993, and she's the second child and daughter, and has started her own family with her partner, Joey Lopez. In 2020, they welcomed their first kid somewhere around September, but didn't reveal much about the birth. Carly was born in 1998 and also leads a very private life. She is the last child of Malone and Kay, and she has started her own family with Brent Diaz, a professional baseball player who was drafted by the Milwaukee Brewers in 2017. Carly and Brent met in 2017 and were engaged in 2020 but right in the middle of the three girls is their brother Carl Jr., or KJ. KJ was born on May 8, 1995. By bearing his father's first name, it was almost entirely expected of him to pursue the same career as his father, but this was not the case. He actually went on to play football. KJ was a four-star recruit from Ruston, Louisiana. He played as an offensive tackle for the LSU Tigers football team, but unfortunately, his football career was cut short by a terrible knee injury that sent him into an early retirement in 2018. He tweeted his resignation on May 15, 2018, saying, quote, Thank you to the Houston Texans for an incredible opportunity. Due to my previous knee injury during my career at LSU, I have not been able to recover and decided it was best to step away from the game of football and take the time to heal. With that being said, I will further my career in law enforcement. Thank you everyone for all your support." End quote. He is currently married to the beautiful Monique Mills, who played basketball in college actually, but is currently a real estate agent. Now for the three kids Carl had with other women and their stories. Daryl and Cheryl Ford were born to Benita Ford and Carl Malone on June 6, 1981, which was the summer after Malone graduated high school. After the court case mentioned earlier, they finally met their father in June of 1998 when they were both 17 years old. I mean, one day I was walking to class and a guy came up to me. i never forget, he said, how does it feel that your dad is making millions and you down here? The twins went on to play basketball for Louisiana Tech, just like their father, and we mentioned that before. But before this, Daryl was part of the Class C Summerfield team that became a part of the Top 28 Basketball Tournament in 1997. Nevertheless, Cheryl was the one who had the most illustrious career, which has also earned her a Wikipedia entry. When she played for Summerfield High School, she was named a Women's Basketball Coaches Association, or WBCA, All-American. She was highly recruited from high school with interests from Tennessee, Arkansas, and Louisiana Tech, but she chose Louisiana Tech University, where she quickly turned into a star. In both 2002 and 2003, she was named the Western Athletic Conference Player of the Year Award and was named to the Associated Press All-America Honorable Mention Team in 2003. I'm afraid of contact, so you can pose me up all day long. After averaging 15.7 points per game in Louisiana Tech as a forward, she was drafted in 03 by the Detroit Shock of the Women's National Basketball Association. She eventually played 10 seasons in America, Italy, Poland, and the Czech Republic for a total of nine teams across the world. She excelled the most in America where she contributed to three WNBA championships. She got a Rookie of the Year award in 2003, two WNBA rebounding titles, and four All-Star appearances. She was also an All-Star Game MVP one time. 
Throughout this time, the mailman did his best to deliver as a father, and he is still in close contact with the twins, but the case was different for poor Demetrius, at least for the most important part of their life. Demetrius Cart Bell was born on May 3rd, 1984, and was first addressed as Demetrius until 2012, but whether you call them Demetrius or Demetrius, Carl didn't want anything to do with him, even after a DNA test confirmed him as the father. So the kid told reporters, quote, I treat it as if my mother went to the sperm bank. I don't hate him for not being in my life. It made me a better person, end quote. Demetrius was 14 when Carl agreed to meet up and reconcile with the twins, but he was not invited to the reunion, and this must have really sucked. Worse, Carl never spoke about him on the news or anywhere else for that matter. And get this, the Ford twins were even in close contact with their brother at the time, but this still didn't matter to the NBA legend. Nevertheless, it didn't matter to him at all, apparently. He was adored in his hometown of Sufferfield, where his father had also grown up. There, he earned a basketball scholarship to play at Northwestern State. At the university, he played 88 games from 03 to 07, but after the 06-07 season, he quit basketball altogether to focus on football, which he only started playing in 05. After graduating in 08 from Northwestern State, he was drafted by the Buffalo Bills in the seventh round of the 2008 NFL Draft. He had an average career at best and could only play 40 games from 2008 to 2013 in the NFL as an offensive tackle. After retiring from football in 2014, Bell was reached out to by Malone and they soon began trying to mend their relationship. In 2018, Bell finally came out to say that he and his father were cool. He revealed that they talked and texted each other a lot and went fishing and hunting together. When Carl finally spoke about his kids from all the women he never married, he was very remorseful saying, quote, I didn't handle it right. I was wrong. Father time is the biggest thief that's out there and you can't get that back. End quote. So with all the mailman did to his children, do you think he deserves to earn their love now? Let us know in the comments section below. And after your comment, and you like the video, of course, check out one of our other basketball family dives, which has everyone talking.